This episode of 100 Not Out proudly brought to you by the 2017 Greek Island Longevity Retreat to Ikaria, the island where people forget to die. To find out more and to join Damien, myself, and an intimate group of 100 Not Outers, go to www.100notout.com. That's 100notout.com. Registrations close in January, so be quick. TheWellnessCouch.com, streaming wellness into your lives. Welcome to 100 Not Out, featuring your hosts, Dr. Damien Christoph and Marcus Pierce. Hello and welcome to 100 Not Out, a weekly show dedicated to helping you master the art of aging well. My name is Marcus Pierce, and here I am with the co-founder of The Wellness Couch and The Wellness Guys, the founder of Forage, the now... Well, depending on the time this goes out, 43-year-old <laughs> legend wow. of longevity. Remember who started this? 39. Dr. Damien Christoph, folks. Hi, mate. Remember when yeah. we started this? Started this. Because I was scared of getting 40. Now I'm at 43. My next big birthday party will be 44. Absolutely. I was going to say, don't say 50. Uh, no. The next big one's 44. 50 will be big. 50 will be big. I'm looking forward to that. We're going to have a 100 not out 50th. Can you take us to, you know... Everest Base Camp. That's what I'm gonna do for my fortieth. Do you? Yep. Just take. Who gets to forty? You get to forty before I get to fifty, right? Just. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really? What mm-hmm. Everest Base Camp? Well, this is the this is this is kind of ties in. I want to ask you a question before we talk about what we want to talk about today. Okay. But you're forty three. Yeah. Do you feel um, I'm comfortable on this couch today? <laughs> just snuggle in. Snuggle in. Right, kind of. Yeah. My arm around. Just physical so, touch. Yeah. Snuggle. Do you feel? I'm not sure what's going on? At four- <laughs> <laughs> at 43 um, because of the I mean we've had massive personal growth and transformation as a result of the therapy for us which is 100 not out mm-hmm. do you feel and truthfully mm-hmm. um, in the last four years do you feel better in mind better in body Are some things better some things the same some things not as good like yeah where do you sit I feel better in mind for yeah. sure, I was pretty frantic a couple of years ago. I had a lot on, doing lots of things, kind of recovering from shifts and changes in, you know, loss of finance through business, all that sort of stuff. But things are better again, you know. So, yeah, you've had some pretty big good. business hits. Yeah, it's been, <laughs> there's been some tough times, isn't there? Oh man! But you know, there's always a silver lining, and you get blessings from everything. And you know, it takes time to heal, and it takes um, time to regain perspective. You know, don't apart from a mobile phone or anything that's automatic, most things don't automatically focus or refocus. You've mm. got to refocus it yourself and you know, look at that and we're not automatic, we're not digital beings, we're very analog and you know, it's, it takes time to refocus. So, done that, things are good, I like that. From a physical perspective, I'm probably stronger now than what I was four years ago. You know, wow. I definitely do more chin-ups, definitely do more push-ups. There's a challenge for people. Can still swim. Absolutely, you can still, can still swim. swim. Well, this is kind of the lead in and, and I love, I just loved what you just said about the fact that we're analog beings because we live in such a digital world Don't we? that people expect digital transactions, relationships, behaviors, expect us to be on autopilot. Essentially, as soon as we press record that our personality is just the same all the time. <laughs> know, right? You know, the people don't like change. And we were just saying, um, Damo and I were just saying last night on reflection of our 100 Not Out Lifestyle Weekend that, you know, I've been at your house for the last four days and yes. my mum has a great saying about house guests, that house guests are a lot like fish, they go off after three days. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and as much as we love each other, I tend to agree with my mum because we have had some good, um, not tips, but we just, the longer we spend together, the more we realise that we are different mm. in, in many ways and we shared some of these differences uh, on the weekend, but I think a lot of people love the fact that we shared the differences that we have because if we're the same all the time, like a digital experience, the phone always works, the computer always works, we get on all the time, yep. and it creates a very predictable, boring um, experience. And that is why we went for a swim in the ocean on uh, Sunday. Um, because <laughs> if we wow. did, yeah. if we didn't, yeah. it would have just been a predictable um, you know, Sunday no, after Sunday morning. Yeah, there's no we'd way. Would have gone to a local cafe, got some of the best coffee in Melbourne. Yep, which has changed location, hasn't it? It has. 
Let's not mention any names, oh, but dear. the best cafe in right. town, close to the Christoph residence, has changed locations. Yeah. Um, but um, <laughs> it, the, the, the reason why, I mean, just personally, I'm not going to speak for Damo here, but I had actually almost mentally and emotionally checked out of the swim because, uh, to give you some context, Don Riddington, who's been featured a number of times on 100 Not Out, at age 68 in 2013, became the oldest Australian to cross the English Channel in a lazy 19 hours and 45 minutes. Um, yeah, yeah and that's true. Now the oldest Australian, I think, is 71. <laughs> I'm going to plug my sound in. That might help. Oh, that's not your sound. There we go. Yep. That's well, right. We'll, we'll, we'll still get enough out of that. That sound quality will be we'll better now. We'll still get enough out of that. Everyone just go, oh, that's better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now um, we hear Damo. That's so good. <laughs> now, um... On that, yeah, so Don, um, um, when he crossed the English Channel in 2013, was the oldest Australian to do so. We've interviewed him at least once on 100 Not Out, and uh, Don was a special guest speaker yeah. at the event on the weekend. And so Don invited um, Damien, myself, and a number of attendees, whoever wanted to come, to swim in the, in the, at the Brighton Yacht Club in the ocean, Port Phillip Bay, Sunday morning. Mm. Um, with every single cell in my body, my logical body, it was not a good idea. It was cold. Um, it was wet. Yeah. Um, it was typical Melbourne weather. It should nah, have been warm. Been and uh, no, that. typical Melbourne weather typical because Melbourne it weather. should have been oh warm and it was Everyone's cold. I'm saying that this is atypical. Well, all I'm saying is this that is in summer weather. you that, still have cold days. See, that's where house guests go off. Yeah. Like you've wow. gone off. That's a ridiculous opinion. This isn't typical. No, we live in. We li this is four seasons in one day. This isn't typical Melbourne weather. We're in the what? middle of spring. It's almost. Summer. We're at the end of spring. It's almost summer. We would normally be at 30 degrees. Don't blame Melbourne for this crazy How many weather. Melbourne Cups have strange. been run in wet, muddy conditions? The start of November. We're now in the middle of November. Yeah. It's very different. <laughs> very different. All right, meteorologist. Anyway, <laughs> regardless, there was no logical reason to say yes to swimming with Don. But it was only after reading a quote from a great man called Wang Dushun, mm. who is 80 years of age. He might be 81 now. But... Wang has not lived an easy life, but he's lived a committed life. And to cut a long story short, and we'll put some uh, a, a, an inspiring video and a couple of articles in the show notes, Wang walked down the catwalk, age 80. Uh, may have done his first one at 79. Um, but in any case, um, it's drawn inspiration from many, but also questioned the role of older people in society. Well, let's just put this into context as well, because he walked down the catwalk at 79, 80, not looking like your average 79, 80 year old. He's in good nick. He's not, he's, he hasn't kind of just, and I don't want to say average because I'm a stereotype, but a lot of people when they get beyond certain age group tend to just, you know, wither away a little bit. Not, not Betty Green. Not Betty Green? Not Betty Green. Um, and, you know, certainly not, you know, Tommy Hafey, he did. But there's, there's a lot of people that actually do just kind of let themselves go. They get to 60, 65 retirement age and go, I've had enough now. I'm going to, put my shoes up, my feet up, and blah, 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 hang my boots up. Because that's what they think retirement is all about. Yeah, but Wang looks great. He, he, he started ripped. going to the gym at 50. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Well, yeah. That's when he really started and to... Started, well, didn't he? Yeah, he started swimming at 50, I think. And so yeah. he's uh, he's in great shape. Not So he wasn't on the catwalk just because he was old, and it was He'd token earned the thing. right. He'd earned the right. He worked on his mm. body, worked on his... He's a good-looking guy. Yeah. Got long grey hair. Yeah, no, he's an attractive man. Yeah. But what he said was, essentially, I'm paraphrasing, as soon as you decide not to do something, that's when you grow old. Yeah. As soon as you start coming up with excuses and reasons why you can't, it's cold, it's wet, it's Sunday phases. morning. Yeah, I mean, yeah, everyone I've saw my Mankini. man, Mankini, my triathlete, Mankini. <laughs> um, Did they but, actually have a padding in the seat of the... Yeah, because because that outfit is what you wear so at a triathlon. Did, I thought about that. I thought, yeah, I think he swam with the padding. Yeah. No, yeah. well, because you wear that when you for ease of transitions in triathlons. Yeah, right. So you, I put that on. I put the the top bit on. Uh, like I wore it without the top, but I put the straps on for humour. If I was really cared about how I looked, I wouldn't have put the straps on. I just would have let them oh. dangle down, which is what generally happens when you're racing. But yeah. I had to bring some humour into it because it otherwise hilarious. It, it would have got Captain Serious. Well, there was hilariousness when you were cold and shivering with the hot chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't drink the hot chocolate because I was shivering yeah. so much. It was splashing all over your yeah. head. It was classic. It was so funny. But it was a rich experience. I've never we seen had... a man so cold. <laughs> <laughs> we had Don leading us off. We all met down at quarter to, quarter to eight. 
Um, we had Rebecca and her husband Justin who had come down from Bundaberg for the event. We had Janelle there. Uh, we had Cameron taking um, taking uh, shots T for Tim us. And Mel. Tim and Mel. Um, Mel decided to photograph and video. She actually came both both Tim and uh, Mel and Cameron who didn't actually get in the water. They came to the water in their gear, yep. ready to swim. Oh, did they? Yep. I didn't De realize. Decided oh. not to swim. And again, we, we were saying to everyone there, Mel you're not Cam. a hero if Cam you swim Mel. and not and not a bad person if you don't swim. But you just um, got old. <laughs> <laughs> they That's played a, a different role. Is that role. what we're saying, Mary? No, I'm not saying that at all. They played a different role because if it wasn't for yeah. Cameron and Mel, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have video footage. or photographic evidence yeah. of what we did. That's right. And so we needed <laughs> these two. They've already got over 150 photos of that experience, which, Thanks well, I don't guys. know about you, but I can definitely treasure that for many years. Yeah. It's a... Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's, I've got a new bedside photo. <laughs> you and your man, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. And so well. on, this, on this episode, we're inviting every listener and viewer to actually consider... What have you got logical objections and excuses for that, you know what, if you did it, it, it it's a great step out of the comfort zone. As Don said or someone else said, no one's going to die. Mm. No one's going to die hopping in the water. We, we felt actually like just, it. Oh my gosh, yeah. the cold shock was unbelievable. So Don told us the water was 21 degrees, right? Yeah. It wasn't. That was meant to be a mindset thing. I didn't really catch on to that. And, did uh, you believe him? Well, I did for a little bit. And then I got in and I was like, this is not 21 degrees. It was 15 degrees, the water, 15 point something. And um, as I dived in, I'm used to dive, uh, used to swimming, so I dived in head first, bang, massive cold shock. My chest cavity felt like it caved right in and I couldn't actually take a breath. And the only thing I could do to think of was to suck in as, as, soon, as, I, as soon as I could. And I sucked in water. <laughs> like the very first <laughs> breath was just water. No, like, you'd be Ugh. shocking in a life or death scenario in the ocean. Oh, no, I wouldn't. You went to all the wrong places. You sucked just... in water. <laughs> you forgot to breathe. <laughs> I'd be fine, but I just hadn't like quite prepared for it. I think I breathed out as I dived in because it was so cold. It was that cold yeah. shock anyway. But uh, yeah, I could have died. <laughs> Don Don could have been wrong. Uh, all I know is is that when because Don, I, mean, I think it's important that we paint a little picture here. Don actually just he counted everyone in, which I loved because you you couldn't not do it. So when someone says one, Justin didn't two, do it. Three, no, but he did. Justin didn't do it. He didn't dive in. Not on three. No, but he, he did go in. He was he? just yeah. He just yeah. he Justin was the. Justin's this. Good on you, mate. He was the whip hand. Because he actually was the last person swimming. Oh. We needed someone to be at the front, someone at the back. But I've got, okay. again, photographic evidence of Justin doing freestyle yeah. in the water. Yep. Um, but when <laughs> he said one, two, three, just backing up Justin here. Yeah, good idea. When, good when idea, he Jay said man. one, two, three, um, you weren't going to turn around and go the opposite way. Even though your brain wanted you to, you, you, you jumped in and, and went like crazy. And like you, and many people said the same thing, I almost forgot to breathe. I just freestyled and then realized that I wasn't breathing and then thought I better come up for air. But then as soon as I stopped and a few people said the same thing is that um, the cold being out of water and not moving started to feel cold. It was actually quite warm when you were swimming. Mm. It wasn't too bad. Is In that fact, because the water was say 15 and the air temperature was like say nine? Yeah, yeah, probably. Is that why? And the wind chill factor, that would have been yeah, pretty chilly. There was definitely that, but I think also when you get moving, I, I don't know about you, but I felt this kind of tingling all over my body. It was like a peppery cayenne sort of tingle all over my body. It was like I was burning up. It was as my body was like going, okay, we've got to keep you nice and warm because you've got no insurance on your body at all. I had no, I've got very little body fat, right? Compared to some other people that, you know, have prepared for that sort of temperature, I don't have much. Do so, talk about that with Don? Because you were saying that Don mentioned that he had insurance for his channel swim. But just maybe for any, and this is not about swimming, but just the role of fat in the mm. body at certain environments. And, uh, you know, we talk about historically how we would burn fat through winter or we would store it through the summer to burn it through the winter. Do you want to just explain a bit about that for people? Yeah, fat's a great energy reserve, um, but it's also a great buffer for temperature. So you often find that uh, it's more difficult to regulate or thermoregulate when you've got extra body fat on you. So if you're getting really hot, you get really hot. It's hard to cool yourself down. But at the same time, it's harder for you to get really cold because your core is well insulated. And so Don, when he swam the English Channel, had to put on a whole bunch of weight. 12 kilos. 12 kilos. And he said that that was his insurance um, so that he would, he would have enough to, uh, you know, to keep him warm. I thought, oh, maybe that might work in terms of buoyancy. But he said, no, no, it was just for warmth. You know, so it was all about you know, him, him maintaining his warmth. Uh, which is good. Interestingly, we often say that children, babies, you know, should be fat, chubby babies. 
and that's in case of illness because when children are ill it's very hard to feed them they need those reserves and so having a, a you know a baby with some weight on them can be of huge benefit is that why yeah so that's why babies like i, look, I think of all of our kids all of my three kids they, they've all been chubby babies yeah you, so, and you're not chubby and Sarah's not, not chubby either. <laughs> You have been chubby. I've had my chubby oh, moments. You've had some insurance. I did. I didn't mind oh, my little bit of insurance. chub. Wow. But I do have a little bit of chub, which was poking out of my mankini. <laughs> <laughs> you did, didn't you? That was quite funny. Cute little pooch. <laughs> that's exactly was how we like to term it. But that's really <laughs> fascinating that you say that now. So does that mean that a, I want a better term, a, a, a th thin, I don't know if thin is the right word, but, but babies that don't have that, Fat. is that um, less likely to is it harder for them to maintain not just temperature but a lot of other oh, they'll get colder functions. they'll get colder faster yeah definitely um, but babies have a you know a, a, rem a remarkable ability to thermoregulate just generally but they they don't respond well to rapid changes in temperature mm. you know a rapid shift in cold or a rapid shift in heat very very difficult for them so to some extent whilst we're, we're being very primal swimming in very cold water it's a very adaptive response to be able to handle changes and shifts in temperature that's what i think i was most fascinated by is to see what would happen to my body and mind in doing something so far outside mm. my comfort zone yeah yeah can i just ask you a question off the cuff outside of that swim on sunday morning um is there an experience in your life where you remember going massively outside your comfort zone like I think of like when Lawrence does the um, Viking things, whatever they're called, yep, Spartan, Spartan races and the rest. I'm so far outside my comfort zone. Yeah, that's outside my comfort but zone. I've way, I've got no inspiration to do it whatsoever. Yeah. The swim was a little bit different yeah. because it was Don, because we had others there, that accountability. Yeah. I wanted to know, you know, he had 19 and a half hours in the ocean. We had, I felt like I had 19 seconds, but it was about probably 10 or 15 minutes. You have a great respect for probably, what he did. You know, surfing and skiing, like now if I was to go surfing these days, in the water where there's sharks, that would really freak me out, you know. Come up and to my come up to my place. Oh my gosh! Well, at least you got dolphins. Yeah, they, they might dolphins. protect you a little bit. But um, yeah, sharks kind of freak me out. Ever since watching a movie, which I highly recommend you don't watch. <laughs> it's called The Reef. Don't ever watch it. You'll never want to go back in the water again. <laughs> oh. So is that really like? So how deep? I mean, obviously Port Phillip Bay is a little bit different. Yeah, um, they haven't got they haven't got aggressive sharks there. It's too cold for the sharks to go mm. there. But you know, the reef was filmed up in the Whitsundays. True story. It was actually a true story. It was like almost like a documentary don't movie. Tell, don't tell people. Don't oh, tell, you just scared people. Cannot, All right, so I cannot do it. So now I can't. So to step outside my comfort zone, I'll have to go ocean swimming or go surfing. That does actually get my heart rate going. You're getting sweaty palms just thinking about it? No. Mine, mine is um, mountain... Um, mountaineering, not necessarily bushwalking, but I'm getting sweaty palms just thinking about it, where you kind of have to balance, and if you don't balance, you fall, and you could fall a long way. Yeah, right. And whether it's 10 feet, 100 feet, whatever it is, but that type of... Um, height, height issue. Yeah, where there's a like a real consequence if you fall, Yeah. that, that gets me clammy. Yeah, that that's gets me clammy. So I don't know if that means that it'd be wise for me to do... Base camp. Yeah, well, that's that's. You just burped in my face. I think I just you burped. just burped in my face. No, it's a quiet burp. <laughs> you just burped in my face. <laughs> oh, oh my the away. gosh, Marcus Pierce. No, no secrets between oh, us. Oh dear. Burp. It wasn't in his face. Just for those listening, it was. Um, it was. You burped. It was a and then silent kind burp. Blew it in my face. <laughs> blew it in my face. <laughs> now anytime oh, I no, breathe, no. I feel like a burp. Unbelievable. Testing Unbelievable. your unconditional love for Four me. Four days. Man. Definitely gone off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fishy. I'm fishy. So, yeah, so base camp would be one of those things that it would challenge on so many levels. But then I go, well, is it more just like a really hard bushwalk? Or are you oh. actually like, well, you know, pop it, popping things in rocks and then climbing up? What are they called? The, the carabellas or the mirabellas or... Something like that. Whatever uh, I reckon is. if you ask Jan Smith, is what you do just a, uh, a really tough She's walk? climbing to the top of Everest. I'm saying base camp, not to the top of Everest. It's still, I think it's still quite difficult. I, I, I wouldn't disagree that it's difficult. I'm just more like, are there consequential times where one wrong footing is the difference between... I haven't heard of anyone dying on the way to base camp, mm, right? Yeah. Um, so is it more like yeah. one wrong footing, yeah. you're going to break a leg, or one wrong footing, you can fall to your death? Yeah, sure. Um, Everest is like one wrong footing and fall to your death. Yeah, but sure. But base camp, 
not necessarily um, not necessarily the case. Yeah. So. Oh, interesting. Yeah, interesting. But look, you know, doing doing that and hearing Wang or you know watching Wang and seeing how he's transitioned from a very humble life into a you know quite a successful catwalk life as a result of you know mastering the art of improvement of his body. Uh, I I actually. I feel very empowered and very inspired to be able to do more things that kind of challenge my comfort zone. Mm. Um, and it's through experiences, you know, obviously we've been doing 100 Not Out now for nearly 200 episodes. That's a long time, mate. Congratulations, by the way. <laughs> you too. It really is great. And, uh, and, and through that time has been enormous growth. And so whether it be discussion of aging, the sensation of aging, um, exercise, the realization that food isn't all that there is, um, the realization that exercise doesn't have to, you know, be any more than just movement, um, mindfulness, kindness, um, engagement, purpose, all these sorts of things have actually helped adapt and, and help me um, become a better person, I think. You know, to understand the love languages helps me communicate better, etc., etc. So this whole 200 episodes of counseling between you and I has been an incredible experience. And, and another unique example of that is going beyond and outside my comfort zone. Yeah. To swim in the ocean when it's 15 degrees out and yeah. cold. That has been, I think, a really, that's been a big development in the 100 Not Out process is the more people we interview, I suppose the addition to the philosophy is doing things that stretch you. Yeah. Because that's what, if you look at mainstream um, society as they get older, it becomes way more focused on comfort and contentment yep. and no real room in lifestyle for growth and development. It's very true. It's mm -hmm. very true. Yeah. Been a great chat as always. Has, has Thank it. you again yep. for your wisdom and opening up and uh, sincere apologies for that um, Burping my face. involuntary <laughs> burp that just <laughs> came out. I don't know if you heard that. You oh, would have seen it. You would have seen it. Um, you could actually go, if you're only listening if you to this. put it in slow-mo, you could probably look at Tomo's face. <laughs> <laughs> as it occurred <laughs> fun and games here on 100 the shock, out, the shock of it uh, would love to have you continue to join in the conversation go to the wellnesscouch.com forward slash 100 not out facebook.com forward slash 100 not out but make sure you spell it out there go to damienchristoff.com to find out more about Damo and myself marcuspierce.com.au see you in Ikaria for those of you coming to the Greek Islands with us in 2017 go to 100 not out.com for all the information there until next time as always continue to make the rest of your life the best of your life. This has been a production of thewellnesscouch.com. Check us out on Facebook and join in the conversation on facebook.com forward slash thewellnesscouch. Subscribe to each show on iTunes and check us out on Twitter. The Wellness Couch, streaming wellness into your lives. Whilst the Wellness Couch presenter endeavor to provide accurate and helpful information to their listeners, these podcasts cannot take into account individual circumstances and are not intended to be a substitute for health and medical advice from a qualified health professional. You should always seek the advice of a qualified health professional before acting on any of the information provided by any of the Wellness Couch podcasts.